If you have any selection pattern you're trying to get to, you have got to try out this option called Select Next Active. All you gotta do is select two elements and get to the option, and then from there, it is going to predict the next one that you're about to get to based on the gap and the position of the previous selection. Not knowing your options and or not knowing how to use them can cost you hours when it comes to 3D modeling. And so in this video, I compiled all the selection methods as well as some selection tips and tricks in Blender that I think everyone should know about. Just to clear out anything you might have missed in the basics, the left mouse button selects objects, holding shift and clicking adds another object to the selection, and control shift and left click will deselect an object. Now dragging the left mouse button will let you select all the covered objects within the default box selection and holding control while doing that will on the other hand deselect those objects. And now this box selection is just one of the four different selection types which can be accessed by pressing W until it toggles the type of selection that you want or by holding left click on its icon on the toolbar. If you want to just straight up grab single objects automatically, that is absolutely doable by the default box selection but using the tweak tool just by grabbing with the left mouse button on objects will actually save you a ton of extra clicks. By the way, please don't forget to hit like if you think this video is helpful. That's gonna help the algorithm spread this to more people who need it. And if you're trying to select some kind of organic path, now that is going to suck if you have to use the box selection for that. I'd rather just press C for the select circle and now you can just brush the selection by holding the left mouse button. You can adjust its radius here or by scrolling with the middle mouse button while you're dragging with the left or by pressing the plus or minus key in the number pad. But sometimes even that's not going to be enough when things get too tedious and need a bit more accuracy. In that case, you also have the lasso option which works just like the box tool but this time you're going to manually draw the borders of the region you want to select. Now most of these tools have different modes that I honestly find a bit redundant but I think it's pretty cool to know they're there. The default mode selects an entirely new selection every time you use the selection tool again and the second mode lets you add whatever's covered by the new selection without having to hold shift. The third one on the other hand lets you subtract, the fourth one lets you invert the selection and the last one limits the selection to where it intersects with your existing one. And by the way, while you are on the act of using the lasso or the box selection, holding down the spacebar together with that will actually move the entire shape. And if you are overwhelmed with having too many objects to deal with, always remember the shortcuts A to select everything, Alt A to do the exact opposite, and Control I to invert the entire selection. Always take advantage of the period key to zoom to your selection and get rid of the unwanted objects momentarily with a forward slash key which toggles isolate objects so you can focus on editing without distractions. Also, you can use H to hide a selection, Shift H to hide the unselected objects, and Alt H to unhide everything. And these hiding options will work even if you're in edit mode. You also have the home key to frame all the visible objects if you get lost. If different objects are getting mixed up, you can select per object types in the select menu or select the similar object types from a selection in the select groups menu which you can access with Shift G. And in there, you also have the option to select similar light types in the scene. You can also access the active camera in the select menu. Also, when you're getting caught up in the clutter, don't forget to make use of collections and the shortcut to access that is by pressing the M key. And from there, you can make new collections or move objects from one collection to another and you can also do that in the outliner. And if you want to save memory, you can make use of the feature called instance collection by right-clicking on a collection and hitting instance to scene. This basically works like a proxy that is uneditable and is a bit lighter that you can just copy and paste and you can select these instance collection in the linked objects menu. And the shortcut for that is shift L. Another useful selection option similar to this is select linked object data which selects all the linked copies that you might have duplicated with alt D. Also if you know you're about to work with tedious scenes you might want to name your objects reasonably in advance with F2 because we actually have this really awesome feature called select pattern that literally selects objects with similar names. Now in this example I named these objects as follows and if I use this option to search for Bob it simply selects the object named Bob and now if I type Bob asterisk it selects all the objects with the name Bob with additional characters after it. And now if I type in asterisk Bob asterisk it selects all the Bobs with additional characters before and after it. Replacing this asterisk with a question mark has the same effect but the additional characters will be limited by how many question marks you put in. And you cannot place question marks before and after it at the same time though. Also when working with symmetrical or paired objects you might want to use the select mirror option which helps you to select the objects pair. To use this you just have to get the object you want to use and then add either a dot L or dot R or dot left or right at the end of its name. Next thing you want to do is get its pair and give it the exact same root name but with the last name on the opposite side. And from here you can now select in pairs with this option. Note that this is case sensitive and this expand option in the pop-up menu generally toggles between switching to your new selection or adding that to the current one. Now we also have some useful options for symmetrical objects 
objects in edit mode. If you go to the select menu, select side of active allows you to select everything in one side of an axis and the mirror selection allows you to select the elements on the opposite side of the geometry. Another thing that can save your precious time selecting is by setting the color of your objects in the object properties and viewport display. You can toggle displaying these colors by going to the viewport shading and changing the color option to object and be sure that you're on viewport shading mode. From there you can select objects with the same color by holding down shift G and selecting the color option. Also in relation to that we happen to have an option that selects objects with the same material in the shift L menu and if you want repetitively arranged objects to appear a bit natural and or organic you can always use the select random also in the same select menu. Now if you're someone who likes hooking like Captain Hook you can absolutely select all hooks of an object in the shift G menu and from there you can just hook up which brings me to my next point that is parenting. Now if you're working with parented objects sometimes it can look super messy and a faster way to work with this is by hitting the bracket keys or by holding shift with the bracket keys to switch or extend the selection to the next hierarchy. Now I don't actually use this but I think these will come in handy when you're rendering and animating. If you go to the object properties in the relation section you can select objects with the same pass index with shift G and in the scene properties you can also select the objects with the same keying set also in the same menu and if you've got anything going on in the particle system properties you can select objects with the same particle system in the shift L menu. Now back in edit mode you cannot actually affect anything that's behind objects when you're trying to get multiple selections with the selection tools unless you enable x-ray mode which you can toggle on and off by pressing alt Z and when you're trying to clean up your model and find it too tedious to manually look for mistakes in your geometries we actually have the section called select all by trade and there you will find the options to select loose geometry interior faces and non-manifold which really helps a lot with the task non-manifold objects are 3d elements that cannot exist in the real world like vertices lines and planes also when I make cut using booleans I find it really handy to use the select sharp edges option to get to the borders and add a bevel and when everything's cleaned up the option select edge loops and edge rings become more accessible and the shortcut for that is by holding alt then left click for the edge loops and control alt left click for the edge rings and interestingly we also happen to have a similar option called select shortest path which connects two selection points and the shortcut for this is done right after you've already made a selection you just have to hold control and click on the next point where you want the path to connect to this can also be very helpful when making seams and creases seams are basically cuts where your textures are going to be projected on and creases are elements you want to keep sharp when you're smoothening out with the subsurface modifier and we also have the options to select them in edit mode as well if you've got a perimeter going on and you want to select everything that it covers we've got a handy option called select inner region for that and there's even an option to select and deselect its boundaries from there you can also select more or less with control plus and control minus in the number pad or if you're trying to select a whole geometry you can do that quickly by pressing ctrl l and that will select everything that's linked to your current selection or you can just hover over the geometry and press l without having to select anything prior and similarly just hover over and then shift l to deselect if you have any selection pattern you're trying to get to you have got to try out this option called select next active all you gotta do is select two elements and get to the option and then from there it is going to predict the next one that you're about to get to based on the gap and the position of the previous selection the shortcut for this is control shift and the plus sign on the number pad and if you actually press the minus key instead it is going to the select previous active option which does the exact opposite if the object you're trying to edit has some planar parts and you want to tweak them all together you can easily access those with shift G and selecting normals or if you just want to edit the ones that are linked to the object you can do that with the coplanar option we also have the options to select the parts that are smooth or flat and also faces with similar typology with the face region option when working with angons you can select other elements with a similar number of sides to your selection in the shift G menu and you can also choose not having to select anything and straight up typing down the number of sides by selecting the faces by side option in the select all by trade section and if that's not enough we even have options to select elements with similar lengths and perimeters but if your selection is just too specific for all these options be sure to save them as vertex groups now you can find this feature in the object data properties and to make a new vertex group you just gotta hit plus and you can delete one by hitting minus to assign elements into a vertex group first select the vertices edges or faces that you want to be grouped and press assign and basically it's just the same process if you want to remove them you can also rename them and in this example I just grouped a bunch of other faces just to show you a clear example of how it works and now from here you can just select and deselect these vertex groups whenever you need them now if you want some elements to belong to multiple groups that is totally fine down here you can also edit its strength but note that you have to press assign every time you change this you can toggle the visibility of the strength in the viewport overlay 
blades, red is the strongest and it falls off weaker as it turns into blue. Now this feature can be used in many ways but for this example let's just use it on a modifier. So I got this sphere, went to edit mode and selected everything, hit ctrl f then p to poke and do that a couple of times so we have something to work on. Now I selected some of its elements and saved it as vertex group and went to the modifier properties and selected wireframe. Now what this does is it simply converts all the edges into 3D meshes. Now if we select that vertex group that we just made down at the bottom, it is going to apply that operation to that group. If we go to weight paint mode, we can also apply a bit of fall off to its strength. We got a set of brushes here as well as some effects. And if we do that, the fall off is also going to be applied to the modifier. Now if you're familiar with particles, you can also use this feature to scatter stuff which is one of the things I use this for. But if not, well I am saving that for another video so stay tuned. If you're thinking about subscribing, this channel is all about Blender and Unreal Engine. There will be tutorials and there will be times where I'm just having fun building crazy stuff. Recently, I've been just trying to compile all the basic boring stuff about Blender but in the next video, I'm probably gonna build something weird.